Hey guys, and welcome to my channel. I'm so glad to have you. So today we are gonna be talking about how to forgive. Now there's so many different ways how to forgive. I'm just gonna narrow it down to three, these three that have helped me personally the most. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence, Lord God. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your love, God. And we thank you for your truth, Lord God. And Father, I pray that you would transform each and every one of us through this message in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So how many of you know when we get hurt, right? And when we get offended, you know, and we stay in that, we lose a sense of life, right? That's why I titled this forgive and live again, because when we get hurt, we get wounded and we get offended. It's literally like if our, our life gets put on a pause button, like somebody hits the pause button and we're stuck in that pain sometimes. We're stuck in that moment. We're stuck in that offense. We're stuck in that, in that anger and that hurt and that whatever, right? We're stuck and it's like our life, our living, our loving, our experiencing of life goes on hold and it goes on pause because we're in a state of pain or we're in a state of trying to recover from that pain, right? But guess what, if you and I can learn to forgive quickly, we will continue to experience the blessing of life and we will continue to shine our light in the darkness even though we get hurt and we get offended, okay? So let's go ahead and go to the first one. Number one, realize that you are hurt. I know that sounds so simple, but I personally have had moments where I've been hurt by somebody and my anger or my pride just rose up because I didn't want to be hurt and I didn't want to let anybody know I was hurt because I had so much pride or whatever. And so I stuffed it down like, no, I'm good. You know, you, we see people do that all the time. You probably did that, right? Or, you know, you say somebody says something rude to someone at work and you could feel their pain, right? That, that, ooh, that hurt them. And you ask them, hey, are you okay? I'm good. Why? Because, and, you know, just totally faking like they're not hurt and they're not offended that that didn't bother them, right? Because our pride will, will try to, try to, you know, get in there, right? And that anger will try to make us feel like we're not hurt because we'll, in our minds, being hurt means being weak right? In our minds, being hurt means that I'm not strong and I'm not tough and we're taught to be strong, you know, just go through this life. But God is aware of how he created us and how he designed us. And God wants us to live vulnerable. God wants us to live sensitive. He wants us to live with our hearts open. He wants us to live with the ability to, to feel the emotions that, that come at us in life. It doesn't mean he wants us to live led by our emotions, right? We're supposed to be live, I'm sorry, supposed to be led by the spirit. But it doesn't mean that those emotions and that our heart being tender is not a good thing. It's a very, very good thing. Very healthy. Our heart is supposed to be tender. It's supposed to be soft. So number one, acknowledge and realize when you're hurt, right? If somebody said something to you, if somebody did something to you, and it hurts you, just say, you know what? I'm hurt right now. Okay? So I've had to have moments where I've literally, I got hurt at work. Somebody said something and I'll, it really hurt me. And I was like, okay. And they didn't even, this one particular thing I'm thinking of, they didn't even mean to say it, but it did hurt me because it was a personal thing within me. I didn't say anything to them, but I did go to the restroom and I was like, Lord, oh my gosh. You know, and I just cried before the Lord, you know. And, and the truth is, guys, that we are weak. The truth is that we're weak, so just get that, that mindset that the world gives us to suck it up and be strong and blah, 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 and especially if you're a guy, you know what I mean? You're, if you're a guy, you can think, well, I can't cry and I can't be, no, the Bible talks about being tender hearted, being sensitive, especially when you want a relationship with the Holy Spirit is very important, remaining soft, remaining tender, having a heart that can hear and see, right, because there's no callousness there, it's so key as a believer and as a believer who is pursuing God's presence. So I literally went to the restroom guys and I just cried and I was like, Lord, they hurt me. I know they didn't mean to hurt me, but they hurt me. And then sometimes guys, people intend to hurt us, right? And that's just because of the own things in their hearts, their heart condition, right? When people are hard, they can only hurt, right? When we are hard, we can only hurt, right? So realize that you're hurt. Realize, take, so that only, God can only heal a wound that is presented to him. If we're coming to God and we're trying to, I mean, if you can't be vulnerable with anybody, be vulnerable with God, right? Everything is naked and laid bare in his sight. So, but if we're bringing our hurt and our pain to God and we're trying to hide it, like if I'm not really hurt, Lord, but I'm okay, but 
No, 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 no. Realize that it's hurt, that it's hurting. Realize that it's, uh, you know, you are offended and be real about it. Be honest about it. Be open about it, right? I'm not saying go and tell everybody, you know, but definitely bring it before the Lord or a trusted brother and sister in Christ and talk it out with them so that God can truly get in the wound and heal it. And now I'm kind of talking about day-to-day -day offenses and hurt, but some of us have lifetime hurt. Things that people have done in our childhood, abuse, things that are, are, are wrong, you know, and, and it was on a long-term basis. It wasn't just like a one-time thing, right? Maybe it was for years, whatever, anything like that. I've experienced that myself, you know, but it works the same way. Sometimes we harden ourselves and say, you know, I'm over that. I just don't ever want to talk to that person again. I don't ever, I don't ever want to think about it, but I'm okay now. I'm okay. But we don't acknowledge and realize that there is a wound there and that God wants to heal it, right? So, okay, number two, realize how much forgiveness you need. This is another way how to get um, how to forgive people, right? And get through that pain of, of, of whatever people did to you. Realize how much forgiveness you need. We live in a very judgmental culture, a very judgmental society. So when somebody hurts or offends us, we're so quick to turn on them. Like if we could do no wrong ourselves, right? We're so quick. We will dog someone out, right? Like if they are literally the enemy himself, right? In human flesh. And that's literally how we treat people sometimes. When they are probably just a human that made an honest mistake, or maybe they intentionally did it, but how many times do we look and point at others, but we don't stop and realize, when was the last time I hurt somebody? When was the last time I needed mercy and forgiveness from somebody because I was mean? Because we don't stop and think like that. We just think, this person hurt me, this person offended me. They are now marked as the worst person in the world right? End of story. They cannot change in my eyes, which is if we're, we're not in the seat of the judger to put someone in that, you know, condemned state. We're just not, we're not the Lord, right? So we're not privileged to that. One thing that my, um, one of my spiritual leaders taught me is she said, we have trouble forgiving people and showing mercy because we don't realize how much forgiveness and mercy we need from the Lord and from others. I'm telling you guys that changed my whole life. I'm going to read it again. We have trouble forgiving people and showing mercy to others because we don't realize how much forgiveness and mercy we need from God and from the Lord. But she really, she spoke this to me. She really emphasized how much forgiveness we need from God. How many of you know David said, against you and you alone, you alone, Lord, have I sinned, right? We sin against people all the time and we sin against the Lord all the time, right? And when we sin against people or wrong to people, we are first and foremost sinning against the Lord, right? Because we're supposed to be doing everything as unto the Lord. So when we hurt and we offend people, you know, we are hurting and offending the Lord because that heart is the one that's doing it. It's a heart condition that he's concerned with, right? So and rather than being ministers to the Lord, right, we become offenders of the Lord and grievers of the Lord, right? And God doesn't intend for us to be that. So when people hurt and wrong us and offend us, we have to stop and realize that we have hurt and offended the, the Holy Spirit. We have hurt and offended people, right? And that we need to show mercy, just like God showed mercy to us. And just like other people show mercy to us all the time. I'm sorry is a rare word sometimes in our, in our culture, right? Because we're so quick to realize when we're wronged rather than, than when we wrong someone, right? That's just the society of pride that we live in. And God wants to bring change to that. And you could be that change. I could be that change. Where if we will humble ourselves and forgive and show mercy, right? God will show mercy to us. Look at the scripture, Matthew. 6 15 it talks about how if we don't forgive others our heavenly father will not forgive us right so in your own time go I'm gonna um, post it below as well but it says if we don't forgive others their sins our heavenly father will not forg forgive us of our sins I don't know about you but I need the forgiveness of God oh my gosh every single day right I need the forgiveness of God I need the mercy of God I need his mercy to be full in my life right so I can't afford to go a day without God's mercy and a day without God's forgiveness right so I can't afford to go a day holding a grudge the Bible says in another scripture don't let the sun go down on your anger right so that means that shows how important it is to God it says or we will give the devil a foothold right so don't allow the Sun to go down don't fall asleep when you're still angry at someone right but choose to forgive because God forgives you and you need mercy so show mercy it's so and it's so beautiful guys that we have the opportunity and the privilege to show people mercy 
If you can't do anything, if you wish you had more money to give, if you wish you had all this stuff to give, look at what's in your hands to give already. You have the ability to show mercy every single day. And that is so beautiful. Okay, number three. Realize the reason why you are so hurt is because your hope was in that person or that situation panning out the way you wanted it to go rather than it being in God. So my hope was in the wrong place. Realize that your hope was in the wrong place. Realize that you're so hurt and you're so um, offended and you're so depressed right now, right, at this, at this person or at this circumstance or this, this organization or this workplace or whatever. We could be holding grudges against workplaces, churches, people, our president, our government, you know, the, the welfare system. We could hold grudges against people, organizations, things, whatever. The enemy is just looking for anything to, for us to hold a grudge about so that our heart is not in joy and in love and we won't shine that light that God's given us, right? So realize that the reason why we're so hurt is because our hope was in that, in a way that it should have been in the Lord. The Bible talks about put all your hope in the Lord, put all your trust in the Lord, right? And that is where we're safe. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, after we, we hope, you know, in this relationship and the relationship doesn't work out, we go into depression for days, months, years, right? Because we idolize that relationship. It'll be a lot easier to forgive what the things that have hurt us when we realize that I should have never had my hope in that the way I did in the first place. We could hope for our marriage to work out, but if it doesn't work out, and I'm not declaring this or saying, speaking this over anybody, it's God's will for marriages to work out. But if it doesn't work out, I'm not going to fall to pieces because all of my hope is not in that human being being perfect. If, you know, my friend hurts me, I'm not going to fall to pieces and end the relationship and never trust anybody again because all of my hope is not in that, is not in that person. The Bible says that Jesus entrusted himself fully to no man because he knew the hearts of man. Now, this is not saying don't trust nobody, right? That don't get me wrong in that, but he didn't entrust himself fully to any man because he knew the hearts of man. So you know what you're capable of, hopefully. You know that you're capable of hurting people, disappointing people, blah, blah, blah. That's why we show mercy, right? Because we know we can make the same mistakes and we don't judge because we can do the same things, right? But if you know your shortcomings, imagine the shortcomings of people, organizations. Organizations, workplaces, churches are made up of what? People, human beings, heart, you know, heart made of the same heart, same flesh, same everything that you and I have right so that means that they can disappoint us that's why the bible talks about not putting your hope in man but putting your hope in god this doesn't mean you don't continue to follow spiritual leadership and or you don't you know continue to learn from people because god will put his hand on somebody and use them you know in different times and it, it and it doesn't mean that we disregard all human beings as having anything valuable because i trust in the lord so i don't need you to teach me how to tie my shoe the Lord will teach me. Well, the Lord uses people too, right? So, but what I mean is don't put all your hope in that job. If you put all your hope in that job and that job turns out to be the, you know, the worst job you ever had, your life is going to go to nothing in a second, right? When you no longer work there or when things don't go out the way, don't pan out the way you wanted them to, right? Because your hope was in that. So put your hope in the Lord. It'll minimize the amount of times that you get hurt and the reasons why you get hurt because your confidence is in the Lord and not in human beings. Your confidence is in the Lord and not in circumstances and situations being just right in our eyes. Okay, so I hope this blessed you. I know this really, these real simple three things have helped transform the way I live. And guess what, guys? God wants you to live in love. God wants you to live free. He wants you to live in joy, right? He doesn't want us to live bogged down by the weights that pain bring and the weights of unforgiveness, right? No, live free from unforgiveness and live again. Experience life. So many times when we get hurt, we stop. Like I said, that pause button comes on our life and we stop stop living. But God says to you today, you and I today, he says, live again, forgive, choose to forgive, choose to live, choose to love, choose to run free. God bless you guys. I love you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.